whatever. This is awesome. I haven't found anything that's particularly interesting, but yeah, you find surface finds all over the place. Yeah. They aren't really significant because they could have been kicked around by anyone or any animal. Mm -hmm. Don't know who put it there or when. It's very cool. I've seen um stuff like where they'll make like a, a hammer out of the horse conch shell. Yep. Yeah. These are actually, uh, horse conchs are more um, northern, I believe. Uh -huh. uh, these are called lightning whelks. So oh, that's a lightning whelk, isn't it? Yeah, it is. They're specific to the Gulf Coast. Uh huh. Yeah. Actually, the really big ones like this are specific to this area. They're the and only the ones that they're holes on the other side of all the other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're the first one to know that. Mm. Um, I'm probably the only marine scientist that gets his gastropods wrong when I'm in company. So. No, no. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I found oh, one of these down in Benita the other week. Really? Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, oh, look at that. And then it turned out to be alive. Wow. Very cool. Hey, if you want to take a look down here. Yeah. This is a test that I just dug, which I left my trowel over there. Right here. Wow. Just like the ancients used to do. There's one in the wall there. And actually all around here is the midden, or the layer of shell debris. It goes from there to about here, I'm gonna say. So we've got a good 10 centimeters of the debris from the Native Americans. So you're like a real life modern day Indiana Jones, basically. Kind of. Yeah. A <laughs> lot more dirt, a lot less shiny things. Yeah, but no, I mean, I've always just thought archeology span is so cool. Yeah, definitely. Now, what exactly are you trying to learn by, by digging these holes? Like, are you trying to find different tools and just kind of learn how that culture existed or uh more about where they lived we kind okay. of have an idea of what types of tools they would use and uh the different strategies to making them what i'm trying to see. find out here exactly is the extent of the boundaries of this minute uh, because we can see physically i mean it starts to paper off about here uh -huh, uh -huh. but it's still very present in this hole uh -huh. and it's somewhat present in a hole i dug uh, five meters east of here uh -huh. So it seems like even though this is the modern boundary, it extended further. Trying to back. see what the original size actually would have been, huh? Yep, exactly. And do you know why they built these mounds? Is it? It's not a burial grounds there. Uh, this one isn't. There are burial mounds okay. around. There used to be one here, but it was very heavily excavated, so that one's not present. Uh huh. Um, it could be just as simple as habitation. Like people needed to live somewhere, and this would cause. Um, uh, this would give great protection from the elements. Yeah, and kind of guaranteeing a higher ground kind of thing, yeah, too. Especially or... during storms, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. Um, there's also evidence of people maybe living on the inside of these, which would cause, uh, give you kind of a good wall against anything coming wow. out. Wow, yeah, or yeah. Or animals. Very interesting. Yeah, so jury's kind of out with that. I was hoping to, doing these, even though my goal is bounds, I was hoping to find some kind of extra habitation. Mm -hmm. And then you take the dirt from here, and then you're sifting to... Very, very awesome, man. Yeah, sadly no uh, tools or anything. All of these are unworked. Yeah, yeah. But it does show the midden reached out this. And how do you how do you know when they are worked? Like like as far as they have a uh, there's certain a tools. little knot. Like isn't there a hole where they would have uh, where they drive like the stem of the hammer? I, I've seen one at one point, and I can't remember. Yeah, usually there would be a hole maybe around uh, here. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would be very circular, obviously worked. Uh -huh. But you have to be careful with that because sometimes there's a hole here or here uh -huh. with, with what's called the kill hole. Uh, uh, yeah. These gastropods need that mm -hmm. uh, suction to be able to control themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you break the shell in any way, the animal dies. Mm -hmm. These don't have that, so they were likely steamed and eaten. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? Nice. Come on, join in. I'm showing off some of the archaeology. On yeah, this is cool. Is this where you dug? Yep, that's okay. my latest test pit. Um, just about to finish it up, so you guys came at a good time. Uh, just showing off, just to recap. Right now I'm studying the boundaries of this midden here. We're finding a lot of cool things, including lightning welts, which these were used to make tools uh, by the Native Americans. They would make the tools by hafting it to a... It's still funny I'm in this one. They'd make the tools by hafting it onto a stick. So if I could... Grossly. You would start by putting a little notch here, and then the stick could travel through, and that makes a pretty good axe or a hammer. Mm -hmm. Now these aren't worked, but you'd be able to tell through scarring on the top here, or if it was an axe, this long nozzle would actually be cut off about there mm. and then ground down. 
So very it's cool. cool. Very know that tools. about the axe part. Uh, the reason we find shell tools in Florida, though, I know most people when they think of Native Americans, they think of arrowheads and stone axes. You don't have stones in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead, they were uh, had a little bit of ingenuity and so they decided yeah. to use shells yeah. instead. And they actually used shells to create this entire ridge here. As you guys have walked around already, you might have noticed it's a little odd to have a hill in Florida. Yeah. Uh, this was created by the Native Americans in uh, 1300 BC. Wow. And it's, I believe, 16 feet high at the top. Guptill House wow. is put on the western peak and the eastern peak is uninhabited. Although in uh, the 80s, they did some archaeological research on the eastern side and they found post holes as well, showing the Native Americans on top of building this actually created houses and built wow. structures on top of it. And it being 3,000 years old, who's to say it wasn't 25, 30 feet tall yeah, exactly. back when it was actually occupied? Yeah. You know, with the erosion and the weathering and settling? That's very cool. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe my work here trying to figure out how much uh, it eroded already. We can work out yeah, some kind of map exactly. to figure that out. That's so cool, man. Very cool. Are, are you still studying as far as in school or, or all done with that part of it? Yep, I'm actually doing this internship as part of a course at Florida Gulf Coast University. Awesome. I'm in my last year there now. I've got three more classes. So Very close. cool, very cool, man. It's always worth it, dude. Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, after that, I get my bachelor's and then moving on from there, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Awesome. There's always more to learn with this stuff, and archaeology in Florida is incredibly interesting. Yeah. If you guys want to see more of this stuff as well, my supervisor, Amy Dwyer, is on the other end of the site uh, showing off the point excavation, which actually a group of uh, students at Florida Gulf Coast University are doing. That is so cool. We're going to catch that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. She's great, and she's got some actual artifacts for you guys. Wow. As well. Very cool, man. That's so cool that you guys let the public come and, and learn from this, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, especially Florida archaeology. There's a whole yeah. network of people, and we're very big on public outreach because yeah. a lot of people don't know enough about this stuff, and it's very good to get the yeah. perspectives out there. That's very, very cool, man. I do the same kind of work with biology as far as, you know, a lot of us, the public doesn't really understand how nature works and yeah. trying to change that for the kids' sake so maybe they can make better decisions than we did. Yeah, definitely. But, man, that is so cool what you're doing. Well, thank, thank you so you. much, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks. What's your name? Bye. Ryan. Ryan, I'm Garrett. Great to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you, Garrett. That's awesome. You guys take care. Yes, Have sir.